Hello everyone. Welcome once more to Max Easy Lessons. Today we are going to look at West Indies USA. This one again may be a little bit long, but please bear with me. Stay with me on this one. And if you are new to the channel, hit the red button. There is much more to come. I had a request for questions and answers, and I will do that sometime before the exam. Pretty soon I'll be doing that. If you are returning, continue to keep your buttons on, and yes, we will do some other questions as well. So let's get straight into the reading of West Indies USA by Stuart Brown. Cruising at 30,000 feet above the endless green, the island seems like dice tossed onto a casino's base. Some come up lucky, others not. Puerto Rico takes the pot, the Dallas of the West Indies. Silver linings and clouds as we descend are hallmarked. San Juan glitters like a maverick's gold ring. All across the Caribbean we collect tech terminals. Airports are like calling cards, cultural fingertips. The handwritten signs of Port-au-Prince, Piarca's sleazy tourist art, the lethargic contempt of the baggage boys of their bird in St. John's, and no for plush San Juan. But the pilots bland, you are safe in my hands, drawl, crackles as we land. U.S. regulations demand all passengers not disembarking at St. Juan, San Juan stay on the plane. I repeat, stay on the plane. Subtle Uncle Sam, afraid too many desperate blacks might re-enslave this island of the free, might jump the barbed electric fence around America's backyard and claim that vaunted sanctuary. Give me your poor. Through toughened tinted glass, the contrast tantalize. U.S. patrol cars glide across the shimmering tarmac. Containered baggage trucks unload the fierce with fierce efficiency. So soon, we're climbing. Low above the pulse in city streets. Galvanized shanties overseen by condominiums. Polished Cadillacs shimmying past rasters with push carts. And as we climb, San Juan's fool's glitter calls to mind the shattered innards of a TV set that's fallen off the back of a lorry. All painted valves and circuits. The road like twisted wires. <clears throat> the bright cars. Microchips. It's, uh, it's sharp and jagged and dangerous and belonged to someone else. The poem talks about the passenger's experiences and observations as he or she stops at different airports in the West Indies. The persona talks especially about Puerto Rico and the double standards in the American attitude to immigration of non-whites. In stanza one, we see where the poet uses simile to compare the island to that of a casino game as the Caribbean was once the life, as, sorry, once a long time ago, life in the Caribbean or the West Indies was a gamble. He notes that some comes up lucky and others not. Because of the uncertainty, many Caribbean persons had migrated to the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada. The poet's concern is one of great interest, as he is concerned with the attitude of the U.S. to black immigration. To the persona, Puerto Rico is alluded to being the region's Dallas. Now, if we understand where Dallas, Texas is and what goes on there, we'll understand that it is a city that was made wealthy because of oil. Puerto Rico appears better in the region because of its size, its beauty, its wealthy appearance, and the high level of American culture. In stanza two, the persona talks about other airports and describes each of the airports. The persona also hints at the prosperity of the country. He also notes, too, that Haiti is the poorest country in the region and its airport is described as the handwritten signs at Port-au-Prince, while Puerto Rico is described as plush San Juan. Stanza 3 shows discrimination and double standards of the American image. The tourists who come to the island are not allowed to come off the plane. The poet uses sarcasm here to describe the U.S. as a subtle Uncle Sam. The way that they are treated clearly shows that they are not welcome. Sarcasm is also present in the fact that it is the island of the free, and this refers to the phrase in the U.S. and the land of the free. But for the persona, they are not free to leave the plane. They are not free to disembark as the authorities are afraid that these tourists may run away from the airport and live illegally in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico here stands as an example of the American attitude to the rest of the country. 
The word re-enslave is used to point to the fact that the United States controls Puerto Rico after taking control from Spain. Stanza 4 speaks to how unwelcome the persona now feels. The security vehicles are parked near to the plane to monitor them and the luggage is quickly removed so that the plane can continue on its journey. The persona, or the poet actually, actually uses allusion to the words on the Statue of, the, of Liberty. Give me your poor. The poet continues to point out the hypocrisy of the U.S. policy of discriminating against non-white immigration. In stanza four, the final stanza, the plane leaves and the reader sees the whole picture of Puerto Rico. It also has its share of poverty. San Juan's fool's glitter is what the persona says, and this is an allusion to the saying that all that glitters is not gold. The poet uses descriptions of the city to contrast the wealth and the poverty that exists here. Wealth is described with pulsing city streets, condominiums, and polished Cadillacs. At the same time, the city has galvanized shanties. The persona compares then San Juan to a television set. Now, when a television set falls, it is broken. It is useless, and just as Puerto Rico will be if it no longer offers anything to the world. The island may be modern in so many ways, but this does not protect the island from being damaged. It is sharp and jagged and dangerous because unlike other places in the region, the cultures have not melted and there is still that strong presence of inequality. Colonialism is strong in this poem because the, the persona alludes to the control of the whites over the black islands. There is also appearance versus reality, whereby the persona looks at the appearance of the of, of the country from a distance, but then the reality is that these people are are also poor. It appears that because they are a part of the United States, then the island would have been rich. But the reality is that there is a strong poverty there. Personification is used. One example of this is Uncle Sam, which is the general personification of the United States government. There is simile, San Juan glitters like a maverick's gold ring. This shows that on the outside, at least, Puerto Rico seems to sparkle and seems to be a reflection of its value to the United States. The poet also uses pun, as in silver linings on the clouds. It's a play on the idiomatic expression, every cloud has a silver lining. Another use of pun is seen in the expression, Island of the Free, which is also a play on the United States national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. There is contrast in the poem, definitely contrast, and this is dominant across the poems. Across the poem, sorry. The poet describes the airport setting of other West Indian islands in negative terms and makes use of words such as sleazy and lethargic contempt, yet... In contrast, Puerto Rico is plush, a word which is often used with more positive connotations. As the plane is low above the pulsing city streets of San Juan, condominiums visibly contrast with the galvanized shanty. The galvanized shanty in this case will show the strength of the poverty that exists in the country. It also is in contrast between the rich and the poor in an island that he earlier describes as the Dallas of the West Indies. There is allusion to history. One example is Give Me Your Poor, which alludes, alludes to Emma Lazarus's The New Colossus, which is inscribed on the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty. And the Statue of Liberty, as we all know, is a symbol of freedom. The pilot's command to the passengers is clear with its repetition, stay on the plane. This is repeated to ensure that the desperate blacks do not try illegally to enter this West Indian territory. Alliteration is there as well. The hard T alliterated in the phrase, through toughened tinted glass, the contrast tantalized, emphasizes the security is tight, tough, and torturous against any desperate blacks who may attempt to jump the barbed electric fence. Now, you may have been wondering why I had not touched on the line-by-line -line analysis here, but I am going to touch on the line-by-line -line analysis here. Let's go right again into a look at the poem for the line-by-line -line analysis. The title itself, the title itself, West Indies, USA, suggests that this part of the West Indies island, San Juan in Puerto Rico, has become merely a part of the United States in view of the observer. In line one, there is an endless green, the vast expanse of sea looking more green than blue from the height of the aeroplane. In line two, the bays, 
This is the green felt-like cloth that covers gambling tables in a casino. In line three, some come up lucky and it ends with the pot. Some islands are like the casino dice that show winning numbers with Puerto Rico winning the bet. Dallas is a very prosperous city in the United States and the writer speak, the poet speaks to this in line four. In lines four to five, it starts with silver linings and ends with all hallmarks. The very edges of the clothes look silver as the light strikes them, like precious metals. That's sorry, like precious metal items stamped or hallmarked to show high quality. Of course, there is a promise of the silver lining where there is something good and something surprising to come. Line five to six starts with San Juan and ends with the gold ring. The Puerto Rico stands as the capital and it seems to be bright and glamorous as would a gold ring on the finger of a social misfit. Lines eight to nine. Weed collected terminals and ends with finger marks. The persona and his group retained mental pictures of the airports visited, which were like business cards that left an impression on the culture of the place. In lines 9 to 10, the handwritten signs all the way down to in St. John's, the rough signs of Port-au-Prince, that is Haiti. It shows the poverty, the crude artwork at in Trinidad. There is the it suggested vulgarity the scornful attitude of the porters at st john's antigua also indicated the inhospitality which comes up in these poor countries now that contrast is significant in lines 12 he goes now to to to, to glorify san juan and he says no for clush san juan the persona sees or expects a change in to luxury in puerto rico but is this really so at the end no in lines 13 to 14, but the pilots bland you're safe in my hands, drawl crackles. But warns us, the but here, sorry, warns us that the persona is going to become disappointed. The pilot speaks without feeling and expects to be trusted in his American accent. But his voice crackles, of course. And this is perhaps a distortion of the intercom. But also, it may be that his words hold a sharp burning message for the persona in the poem. Line 17 to 21, and stay with me, people. I'm going as quickly as I can. Subtle Uncle Sam, don't do your poor. The persona gives a cynical interpretation of what the pilot has said. The cunning U.S. government is afraid that without, without such restrictions, the poor Caribbean people, the needy black people, would go ahead and capture Puerto Rico, making it no longer a part of America, and America calls itself the land of the, itself the, land of the free. No, the persona says or interprets this to be that the poor blacks would enslave Puerto Rico if they got past the not only barbed but electric fences around the island. Such people might claim that the protection so much boosted, boasted about by the U.S. as on the base of the Statue of Liberty with the sonnet by Emma Lazarus proclaims to other countries that you can give us those who are poor, tired and weary and America will make them better. Lines 22, through, down to the contrast, stanza lies. Now, the tourists are confined to the plane, and the persona notes of the feeling of helplessness that the contrast is there between the ideals of freedom and the welcome for strangers on the island. He also sees the obsession with security and keeping out those who are not wanted, those who are strangers or aliens to the country. Note, however, that this is the view when looking through toughened tinted glass which may suggest that the persona has become toughened and, and, because, and therefore the bias by his annoyance at being kept on the plane. In lines 25 to 28, so soon down to with pushcars, the contrast is again clear. So if you were asked to choose a poetic device for this poem, it would be best to choose contrast. The contrast also relate to the view of the city as the plane takes off showing vibrant streets but side by side are poor people's shacks and the hovering apartments <sighs> of the rich the swanky cars boring past the poor people's push cart in line 29 there's a fool's glitter just like the fool's gold which is a cheap metal that looks exactly like gold but it's not gold here the poet the persona speaks to san juan's appeal it looks beautiful Yes, but it really is not because it has its share of poverty as well. And finally, in lines 29 to 35, calls to mind 
down to someone else. The persona sees the city with his memory through his memory of a uh, of a TV set that is smashed from the back of a falling truck. The useless component parts painted like buildings, the wires representing the city's roads and the microchips, the flashy cars. Similar to the broken TV, television, San Juan is dangerous to the persona and yet still is the property of someone else. Now, just a reminder, the persona has formed negative impressions of the culture of each island visited on the basis of something that he notices at the airport. But this is not entirely so. The airport may be poor, yes, it may be poverty stricken, yes, but it's not all reliable, yes, because there is also immaturity of the persona. The attractive view of Puerto Rico from the air enhances, it seems, by knowledge of the prosperity, the persona's knowledge of the prosperity of the island when compared to other Caribbean islands. And this is misleading for the persona because he looks forward to seeing luxury at this airport. And it doesn't end, and not ending the flight of San Juan, the, Puerto, the persona has expected to enter the terminal to enjoy this luxury. But it becomes annoyed when the pilot says that based on U.S. regulations, you will not be permitted to do this. So because he becomes disappointed as he leaves San Juan, he recognizes the socioeconomic extremes and the city is seen as wrecked and dangerous and it is owned by poverty. So again, his, his disappointment is clear here as he looks through the hard windows. Now, thank you for stopping by on this free verse poem that has six sections of roughly the same length except the final one which is shorter and which ends the poem suddenly. Remember, stay tuned to the channel people for more. There is more to come. Um, yes, one final thought though. Owned by the USA, San Juan appears to be better off than the independent Caribbean islands. But the price for sharing America's wealth has also been high as the island now belongs to someone else. The persona urges us to claim our freedom, cherish our freedom, and not be seduced by economic independence. Thank you once more people for stopping by. And I do hope you have learned something.